Hello there. We are going to be looking at solving equations today. Yes, yes, this is me. You should recognize me by now. You haven't had to put up with me for very long yet, but hopefully you can recognize my voice. So, just to kind of repeat why I teach some things by videos, okay? I'm in the classroom. You can turn and wave at me now. I'll probably wave back with a really cheesy grin. Hi! Okay, so if I'm there and I'm up here, okay, you guys have the opportunity to ask me questions and the whole class doesn't have to stop. All right, now, some questions I will stop the video for. In fact, I'll pause the video and I'll ask if people have questions for the express purpose of making sure that we're keeping up with everything and we know what's going on, okay? And so this is just another introduction kind of into my classroom and how things work. And so we're going to be looking at what's called an inside-out method for solving equations. I can't state this enough. I love this method, okay? It's awesome. It's like the greatest thing in the world. They always say, you know, it's better than, you know, the invention of sliced bread or something close to that. I'm sure one of you will correct me in a moment. And I just don't remember the exact phrase. But this method for solving equations is absolutely awesome. So if you've never used this before, I think you're going to love it. So make sure that at the top of your notes you have the inside out method for solving equations written down because that is what we're doing today. And then we are going to move forward with the lesson. Okay, so if you are not finished writing that down, give me a little wave so I can pause it. If everyone's done, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with this particular video. All right, so when you're talking about solving equations using the inside out method, now I do want you to write these three steps down, okay, because it's going to be important to you later. Your first step is going to be to break the problem down. We're going to kind of tear it into pieces. Not the kind of pieces you're used to, probably, but we're just going to kind of take it apart. And I'll show you an example of that, so don't worry about that. Our second step is called don't pop as it, do the opposite. Why do I use phrases like that? Number one, they're easier to remember. Number two, it rhymes. And so it's kind of cool. But so our phrase, and we're going to use this a lot during the semester, so go ahead and just kind of get used to it, is don't pop as it, do the opposite, okay? So that's our second step. And then our third step is to work backwards. I think you'll be kind of surprised, maybe, possibly, hopefully, that you can solve almost any equation, even some really, really tough ones, just using this method, okay? And so that's the kind of things we're going to look at. And don't forget, in order to make all of this work, opposites are the key. We've got to do our opposites. One more thing that's specific to this particular method also is that you've got to have one variable equation. So there's got to be one variable, and they can only be on one side of the equation. If you've got something where you've got um, a variable on each side, this method is not going to work. So if you have only one variable, that means one x, one y, one q, one r, whatever, this is going to work. And it has to be only on one side of the equation. Okay, so if you've got one on both sides, we've got to use a different approach, and we'll approach that another day. All right, so without further ado, let me know if you need to go back and write down any of this that we've gone through, and we will pause and do so. If you're already caught up with everything and we can move forward, also let me know, and we shall move forward. Now I'm going to jump back to the screen right here. Whoops, not that one. This one, because this is the most important part. Right now, I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to give you a chance to write this down because you need this, okay? Break the problem down, don't pop as it, do the opposite, and work backwards. So those are your three steps. Pausing right now. Okay, we are back in the game. So now that I've told you kind of what we're doing, let's go ahead and look at a problem or two. I'm going to start with some shorter problems and then we're going to break out and we're going to go farther. Just so you know, I will not use this particular method with one-step equations. There simply honestly is no need to do so. Um, 
because one step equations you can usually look at it and you can say okay if x plus 4 equals 11 well what plus 4 equals 11 and the only thing that you could put in there is is 7 so 7 plus 4 equals 11 so those ones are kind of in our head type things this particular method after a while you'll get to that point but you may not be there right away so the first question that we're going to look at is the question 2x minus 6 is equal to 14. So 2x minus 6 equals 14. Now if you've been doing this for a long time, what you're probably used to is your teachers say, okay, add 6 to both sides, and then divide by 2, and all this other stuff, but we're not doing that, okay? So whatever methods you've already learned, give me a chance, and let's start with a new method, all right? So if you think back to our steps, our very first step was breaking a problem down. And here's how I'm going to want you to do that. We are actually always going to start with our variable x. We're going to write that down first. So we're going to write down x, okay? And now we're done with x and we don't have to worry about it. From here, what we're going to do, okay, we're going to look at x and we're going to see what's happening to it. We've got two things happening. X is being multiplied by 2, and after that, we're subtracting 6. How do we know that the multiplication comes before the subtraction? Try to think back and remember your order of operations, okay? If you remember, some of you have learned it as PIMDAS or PIDMAS or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, da 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 Okay, so your um, parentheses are, are always first, your exponents are second. Multiplication and division go together for your third step. They have equal balance here. You can do either one, and you just go from left to right, okay? And then addition and subtraction are the last step. So it has four steps. So if we look here, this is multiplication, and so multiplication is step three. And then this subtraction is step four. And so multiplication comes before subtraction. And so we're literally going to write it down. What's happening to x? The first thing that's happening to x is it's being multiplied by two. So you have x times two. The next thing is it's being, you're subtracting six. So you write that down. Minus six equals 14. So, I want to point out, the only thing we've done here is we've just written this equation in a different manner. That's all we've done. We've taken this 2x minus 6 equals 14, and we wrote it out in a different way where we put x first. Okay, and it just says what's happening to x. So, just so we can remember, okay, we're taking x times 2, because that's what's happening first. So, x times 2 minus 6 minus 6 equals 14 equals 14 so that's our step called break it down okay so we broke down our equation our next step is called don't pop as it do the opposite we are literally going to do the opposite the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to write that down. We're going to write divided by 2. Instead of multiplying, we're going to divide. The opposite of subtraction is addition. So we're going to write that down. The opposite of subtracting 6 is adding 6. Okay? And that's it. We just write those opposites down. So just to repeat, our first step was to break our problem down. We took x. We we're multiplying it by 2. Subtracting 6, that equals 14. So x times 2 minus 6 equals 14. Step 2, we're going to take and we're going to do the opposites. Okay, so the opposite of subtraction is addition. And the opposite of multiplication is division. It may be hard to see that little division sign, so let me just kind of clarify it there and make it a little easier. Okay, so there's steps 1 and 2. So far, so good, I hope. Step 3 is to go backwards okay so what that means to you okay is you are going to start with your answer 14 and you're gonna go backwards so we're gonna do 14 
plus 6. 14 plus 6 happens to be 20. Okay? And from there, we did 14 plus 6 to get 20, and now we're going to go to the next step. We're going to take 20 divided by 2. Well, 20 divided by 2 is 10. And we can just circle it, and that actually is our answer. Okay? So this means that for this equation, 2x minus 6 equals 14, x is equal to 10. Now, right now, some of you are wondering two things. Number one, why go through this whole process for such a small problem? Number two, why, well, why in the world am I doing this? And I'm going to tell you. It approaches problems not this small but much larger and it makes them easier to deal with. Now, but one thing you always want to do whenever you're dealing with problems, especially in algebra, is you want to double check your work, okay? So I'm going to break this apart. We're going to take this 10 right here and we're going to put it into the original equation and make sure it really does equal 14. So we've got 2x minus 6 equals 14, which means we think x is 10. So 2 times 10 minus 6. Ooh, goodness, that's horrible, isn't it? Hold on. Let's try that again. Minus 6 equals 14. And there we go. So 2 times 10 is 20 minus 6. Does 20 minus 6 equal 14? Of course, yes, it does. So this is a very quick way to get an answer. Now, this is the first one you're doing, so it's taking a little while to do it. But the next ones will go a bit more quickly. And so let's look at another problem like this and see how we go. But first, I'm going to pause this so that way if you need to write anything down, you can, okay? So I'm pausing in three, two, one, one and a half. Okay, now. Okay, hopefully you were able to get that down. Let's look at another problem. Now, the cool thing about videos is that I can put a problem down. If you want to try it on your own, you can try to beat me, because chances are I'm going to go a little bit slower on the video than you would in person. The other thing that can happen is if the entire class wants to try a problem on their own, y'all can ask me to pause it, and I'm probably likely to do so. All right, so here's the next question we are going to look at. I'm going to move the x to show you how this process works. Okay, let's say I have 5 minus 3x equals 10. Okay, so 5 minus 3x equals 10. It's a little bit different from the last one because the x isn't at the front. I put it in the middle. But our process is going to be exactly the same. Remember, our step one was to break down the problem. And I told you that to break down the problem, you start with a variable x. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put our x first, okay? Now, we have to find out what's happening to x. Now, this negative right here causes us a little bit of a problem. We have to figure out, okay, does it go with the 3 or does it go with the 5? And the 5 is just kind of hanging out here. Okay, so what's it doing? Well, here's the key. You need to know that when a variable is right next to a number, any number, it is being multiplied, okay? And the sign goes with the number right behind it. So this negative goes with this 3. So the fact is that x is being multiplied by negative 3, okay? So in my breakdown, that's what I'm going to write, x times negative 3. And now... This 5 that's hanging out here, okay, it does not have a variable attached to it, so it's either being added or subtracted. Since there's nothing in front here, it means it's positive, so it's being added. So we're going to add, oops, let's make this work, okay, add 5, okay? So just to clarify where that came from, x is being multiplied by negative 3, because the negative goes with the 3, okay, it goes with what's right behind it. And then this 5 is hanging out here in front, there's no variable with it, so it's going to be added. So x times negative 3 plus 5. I'm sure it's clear as mud, but we'll do more, don't you worry, okay? 
So once we've got the left side handled, we just put our equals 10. So there we have just done step one. Okay, we've broken down the problem. Step two, don't pop it, do the opposite. So the opposite of multiplying by negative three is going to be dividing by negative three. The opposite of adding five is going to be subtracting five. If you need to, stick this negative three in parentheses so you remember that that's not a minus, it's just a negative, okay? And so keep that in mind. We've done our opposites. Opposite of adding five is subtracting five. Opposite of multiplying by negative three is dividing by negative three. And I'll go ahead and put that in parentheses too to help us out. Okay. Step three is going backwards. We take our 10 and we literally go straight backwards along this line. 10 minus 5 is 5. 5 divided by negative 3, guess what? That's not nice, is it? 5 divided by negative 3. In algebra, the great thing is we can kind of just leave it. Okay, and in math models, it's no different. We can just leave it as a fraction. When you're solving equations, there's absolutely no need to turn it into a decimal unless you need to use it. So we can literally put 5 over negative 3. That's the same thing as 5 divided by negative 3. Okay, and then you can put the negative out front, and it's negative 5 over 3. And that's perfectly acceptable. Okay, that's not a nice, the nicest one, but it still shows you what to do. So two-step equations, if we jump back over here to this one, we used one, remember we broke it down, did the opposite, went backwards, and then we plugged it in. This one we can do the same thing, except I didn't leave room, okay, and so if you need me to, have me pause in the classroom, and I'll do this one kind of on the sideboard, and we can do that together, okay. But again, we broke down the equation with what was happening to x, we did the opposite, and then we went backwards. Okay, let's do another one, maybe a little more complicated. Okay, so here we go. I have three parentheses, x plus 2, close parentheses, equals 48. Now this one looks a little more complicated. We have that parentheses in there, which we tend to kind of hate. But I promise you, this particular method, okay, it's going to be okay. You're going to be able to work through it anyway. So here we go. Step one, break it down always starting with x. So we put down our x, x. We ask ourselves, well, what's happening to x? Well, according to our order of operations, which we wrote down a little bit earlier, remember, parentheses comes first. So what's happening to x? The first thing that's happening is that we're adding 2. And so that's what we're going to write down. Plus, goodness, I'm going to do that correctly. Okay, the first thing is plus 2, okay? Then after we add 2, we're going to deal with the outside of the parentheses. So it's x plus 2, and then we're multiplying by 3. Just like before when you had a variable and a number next to each other and it was multiplying, if you have a number right outside the parentheses, that is also multiplying. And so we take our x, we add 2, and then we're going to multiply by 3. So times 3 equals... 48. Okay, my 8s do not like me today. There we go. Now, so we've done step 1. We broke it down. x plus 2 times 3 equals 48. x plus 2 times 3 equals 48. Follow the bouncing arrow. Okay, <clears throat> now we don't pop as it, we do the opposite. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. Okay. The opposite of adding 2 is subtracting 2, okay? The opposite of multiplying by 3 is dividing 
by 3. All right? And then you've got, that's it. We just have our opposites. So broke the equation down. We did our opposites. Now we go backwards. Okay, so we take 48. We're going to divide by 3. So 48 divided by 3 is 16. 48 divided by 3, 16. 16 minus 2 is 14. So x equals 14. Again, if you want me to kind of show you how to plug it back in and make it work, just let me pause it and we'll do that in class, okay? And so that way I'm there with you and we can just kind of plug it back into the equation and I can answer any questions that you have. I'm going to try to get as many examples on here on the video as I can. So far so good? I hope so. Pause if we need to. Please, 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 if you need my help, please tell me to pause. I will absolutely do so. All right, let's look at the next question. Okay, so I have Q minus 6 over 7 plus 6 equals 9. Now, this looks pretty complicated, but I'm going to show you that using this method, it's kind of just the same process, okay? We just have to know what order things go in. So, remind me, what do we always start with? Well, we don't have an X this time, so we're not going to start with X, but we will start with Q, okay? Because Q is our variable. So we're going to start with Q, okay? And then we find out what's happening to it. Q is first, we are subtracting 6 from Q, so Q minus 6. Now, here's where this can get confusing, and you have to pay very close attention, okay? You are not subtracting 6 here and then adding 6. That's not how that works. We have to jump down here to this down here. When we're looking at a fraction, I think sometimes a thing that we often forget is that fractions are division. That's simply what they are. We just don't want to actually divide to find a decimal, so we just leave it as a fraction. So this is Q minus 6 and then divided by 7. And so that's how we would state that. So divided by 7. So Q minus 6 divided by 7, okay, then plus 6 equals 9. So we've broken down our equation into one line. It's very beautiful. And now we are going to do the opposite, okay? We're going to go backwards, kind of. And so, well, we're, actually, step three is going backwards. Forget I said that. Anyway, so we're going to do the opposite. I'm just going to go from left to right, if you want to follow along with me, okay? The opposite of subtracting six is adding six. The opposite of dividing by seven is multiplying by seven. The opposite of adding six is subtracting six. And that's it. Those are all of our opposites. Okay? So we've got negative 6, or minus 6 changes to plus 6. Divided by 7 changes to multiplied by 7. Adding 6 changes to subtracting 6. From there, we go backwards. We go this direction. 9 minus 6 is 3. 3 times 7 is 21. And 21 plus 6 is 27. Now, I know you're probably curious to see if this works. And I'm going to kind of fit it in a corner here because I want to make sure we do this one, okay? Okay. All right, so we've got 27 as our answer. And so if we plug it back into Q up here, it looks like this. We've got 27 minus 6 over 7 plus 6. And we want that to equal 9. So let's just see if it works out, because that just makes sense to me. Let's make sure it works. Okay, 27 minus 6 is 21. Whoops, I still have that on there. Hold on. 27 minus 6 is 21, okay? 21 divided by 7, well, that whole big thing is going to be 3. 3 plus 6, guess what? That's 9. So this method worked for even one equation that looks pretty tough to begin with. We literally did it 
in three steps. Always just three steps. Break it down, do the opposite, and go backwards. Whoops, not backwards on the page though. There we go. This is one of my favorite methods to solve equations. You can solve a lot of equations doing this, including rational equations that have square roots in them, and we will address that at a later time. Thank you so much for paying attention today. Let me know if we need to rewind and rehash any of these notes. If you need additional examples, please ask in class. I will be absolutely 100% glad to give you any extra examples that you need. Okay? Have a wonderful day. Bye.